kids with February coming and January ending, we have this contest going on right now where the person who does the best character cap can I say that right? The best caricature of myself and Mr. Sam Vera get some really cool stuff. So if you want to get down with the get down, send us your submissions, do a caricature of us two knuckleheads, and the best one get some swag. So send us those submissions. You can DM me at Medina Whip on Instagram or at Catch the Craze on Instagram or even on Facebook or our Facebook fan page. So check us out there. So right? We're back. I like this hook. You got a book you want to tell us about? Well, let's talk. There's no other place to do it. I want a young cast of craze. Cast of craze. Welcome to Catch the Craze Podcast. I am your host with the most Sam the Crazy Man Vera, and I am with George Medina. Oh damn. What's up, kid? Oh damn. <laughs> Yo, he sold out. What's up? I remember the last oh. episode of 2019. Yeah, but this is already 2020. Yeah, but this is like the last episode <laughs> of the month in January. Oh, is that time but we talked about it last year. <laughs> I know. Right? So what happened? I forget. You know me. My 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 memory. It's we should be played. We the, played the dreamer. Oh, you oh, wanted me to see snatch. the dreamer. Oh, snatch. So yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? Yeah, yeah I, I totally. <laughs> I forgot. Do I need to sing for you? Yeah, please. Start. Dream on. Oh God. <laughs> Remember Club Your Bad? Yes. Dream away. Dream uh, away. <laughs> oh, dude. So, it is. It, this is the last episode. Of the last year? episode of January. Yeah. yeah. So we would have. Yeah, he, he knows all this stuff. We would have. We would have recorded already three. He's shows. like Houdini. Yeah. Yeah. I tell yeah, you, yeah. it's so, like if you don't remind me. Yeah, you gotta stay. The funny thing is, okay, so like <laughs> you'll send me, uh-huh. you'll send me like a whole thing. Like you'll say, yo, dude, I bet this is a, this is this is how I think we should do the rundown. This person, this, this, this. I'm like, good movie. Cool. Oh, the rundown. <laughs> yeah. The rundown was a good movie. That was a good movie, yeah. Yeah, so, that, yeah, I think that put Rock on the, as far as like that action hero thing yes. or like that comedy guy. That, yes. Anyway, so, so yeah, so you'll send me that and you'll set it up like this is, and then you kind of forget when we start recording because we go all yes. out of sequence. Yes. It's because it's a sequence. Yes. So this will be airing, to, this is 131, January 31st. Word. Yes. See? Welcome. Yes. Welcome, uh, welcome. So Welcome. Welcome. So on today's show, who do we have on? So we have Caitlin Yarsky. She's a, an artist for, well, she's worked for a few companies. One right. of them is uh, Image is uh, probably the most uh, the most known. But she's also got a project with IDW. Um, and she's got a few things. So we're going to ask her a little bit about all of her projects. Very talented artist, man. If you look at, wow, look I mean, at you're that. seeing it the screen. It is fantastic. Yeah, I mean, amazing. Look at that stuff. Yeah, amazing, dude. Yeah, the story is Coyotes. Uh, Sean Lewis is the writer. He wrote a, a book called The Few. Um, also for Image, well, not for Image, but he printed it or published it through Image, and um, yeah, this guy's this guy's a beast. She's actually working on another project with him. I just love the the design aspect of the covers. Well, yeah, it's funny because, and I wanted to ask her about that because she went to uh, to RIT, but she talked about. Uh, I, I saw a video of hers where she was talking about if you want to get into the business, and we'll ask her about it. But if you want to get into the business, one of the things you got to learn is composition. Yeah, you know, laying yeah. out a page, uh, anatomy, you know, the obvious anatomy. All the things and, I don't know about. Yeah, dude. <laughs> but if you look at these yeah, at, at, on the screen, you, you, I mean, the audience can see it. The layout of these, even like you see that episode three or the the cover for three. Look at the the three women in there. Like, yeah, it, like it, it's well, you, it's it's funny how you say that because the artist that I hired for the cover of Forbidden. Yeah. Um, uh, we went back and forth on the layout aspect of the cover. He went as far as to send me um, uh, camera positioning 
and how they should be positioning with arrows and all that stuff, whatever. Right. Um, and it was a great, great, because again, I've been out of the game for 10 years, going back in, I have an image of what I want the cover to look like, but then he was like, well, it won't, it won't work that way. You know, the camera should be positioned here. This is what should be in the foreground, background. And I, I, and I was very humbled by that experience. Dude, there's an art form to that thing. Yeah. Right? Like there's like a whole, you know, yeah, it is. It, it, it's, it's an art form. It, you know, you have to know what you're doing. I was like, he took me to church. Yeah. I was like, yeah. damn. But See, no, but I was very impressed with the final product. So, right. I mean, he won, he won me over because uh, it made sense to me because everything started kicking in. You know, the rust started going away. I was sure, like, yeah, sure. you're right. You're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then and then when you actually see it, yeah. you understand what yes. the heck he was talking You're like, wow, that's what he yes. was talking about. Yes. I get it now. Yeah. Yes. No, so. no, it's true, man. It's true. But yeah, so we have, um, we have that. And, and, you know, we've been... Uh, 2020 obviously we 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 were looking at um the top you know the top 10 at the end of last year and I, and, yes. I, and I kept thinking about how we did about 15 episodes at the end of last year right that was that was how we ended the run you know from yeah. when the show came back to that and at the end of last year you know obviously and you know it's almost like a recap but we talked about different things that we were going to do and I like the fact that we have kind of gone into that as, as the audience would have seen by now, right? we have added things to the show, including the promo, um, that's different from last year. And it's going to get better. And it's going to get bigger. And, yes. and as we continue later on the, in the year, in the next couple of months or whatever, we're also going to have new stuff and new things yes. uh, coming down the pike for the, uh, for the audience that I'm sure they're... they're yeah, I think the big enjoy. thing is um, <laughs> when I was going through all the footage to come up with the top 10 episodes... Um, um, not that, that segments from each episode or right. the best segments that I thought, and I did some that were re funny, uh, at least to us, and some that were pretty thought provoking. Uh, I saw some opportunities. I said, all right, you know, I want to change the look of that that scene. I want to change the look of that scene. I want to, you know, expand the camera on on this when we're talking and whatever, minimize here and put a focus on this. Um, so I think that's part of it is that that. It was a great opportunity for me just to reset, you know, and assess the look and feel um, on top of the fact that we have a lot of things that we have planned for this year. Um, but it's part of the growth process. Yeah, and a lot, and it's absolutely. also, you know, feedback from people. Right. You know, and that's what's important. Um, if you listen, if you're an avid listener, um, you know, give us your feedback. You know, how, you know what do you think um, we can do differently? Right. Yeah, because it's the only way we'll grow and we'll know what, you know, what people are looking to see or hear about or yeah. watch, you know, and things like that. So, yeah, it, you know, next month is going to be a big month. Also, we're going to have a lot of, you know, whether it's an artist or whatever, next next month, you know, we're also going to, again, expand yes. and look for, you know, new uh, new artists to come on and talk about what they're doing. Yeah, so we actually, um, you know, January secure. This is the last episode of the month. You know, if you haven't, um, if you were thinking about promoting your product, if you were apprehensive of whether or not we'd accept you if you reached out to us. You don't know until you do. Um, reach out to us. There's a lot of people on Twitter um, that uh, thank you so much for following uh, Cast of Craze. Uh, if you're a writer, you're an artist, you know, give us a shout out. Reach me, reach me on Twitter. You know, reach me on Instagram. Reach George on Medina Whip. And let us know that you want to get down on the show and we'll book you. We're booking February, March, and April right now, the spring season. So um send us send us you know a holla. Yeah. I got a couple of a uh, couple of guys that are interested and uh and, and you know we'll we'll give up the uh the uh the itinerary and the, the names as soon as they're right. uh, they're confirmed. But yeah, definitely, definitely if you guys are interested. And then we also have other fun stuff uh that we've been doing, you know, with the uh with the different uh what do we what do we call them? Uh, we we had the GI Joe at the beginning of the uh, uh, of the yes the, the live show so it's the eighties craze yeah right? the so 80s um, craze and then we have the other stuff that yes. you know, that we've been doing yes. so and then we're gonna continue that throughout the year so look for that uh, we'll be posting about all that stuff on the fan book page on the fan the Facebook page yeah. the fan page yeah so check that out um, yeah so we got a lot of stuff man we, we got, got a lot, lot of stuff, stuff going yeah, down definitely. the pike um, I think um, twenty twenty is gonna be an interesting year december was a very controversial month on catch the craze or a lot of uh um i guess uh emotions that were running wild with some of our guests and uh, and opinions on what's happening in the state of the industry or the state of politics um 
So we're hoping to have a lighter month <laughs> in January, but there's a lot, no, of, but I, I, a lot I, of crazy I, I things like happening in the world today. So oh, yeah, absolutely, um, absolutely. You know, it is what it is. But what's, what are we talking about today? So Georgie. Today. So all right. So on our oh, is that what we're doing first? No, that's we not that that's, first. Oh, that's not, oh, story time with Fam. Look at now, that. Why not? <laughs> so this will segue into our topic. Go for it. Right. So one of our topics today is. Um, Let's see. It's the deal, right, George? The deal, deal, so deal. The, the deal, the deal, right? And that segues into story time. Um, so what, before we even get to the story time, okay. Medina, please, it should say the Dreamer Presents, but what are we talking about? We could change that. Um, so, all right, so the segment, again, is get your meds. So if you guys have a topic that you want to discuss, hashtag get your meds. Send me a, a topic, you know, we'll do a little research about it, talk a little bit about it, and we'll go from there. But this one is... Um, ladies, it doesn't, ladies, it doesn't mean get your Medinas, all right? Yeah, He's no, taken. No, yes, Just absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, so deal, deal, right? Cambridge, the Cambridge Dictionary, okay? Oh. All right? It, it's, uh, it basically gives us a definition of deal making, and it is the activity of making business agreements or arrangements, Okay. We all make arrangements. You know, you make, you know, I tell you I'm coming here at six. We always make an arrangement. Oh, no, can you make it there at 630? We never look at that as we just made a deal. Right. Right. We just made a deal to meet somewhere. Right. We do this every day of our lives. For some reason, when that meeting goes into a boardroom or goes somewhere else, all of a sudden it just becomes harder to do. Right. Right. And I think that some of us as creative, you know, and creators and people who like to do creative things. We think of deal making and I think we lack the desire, right? right? Not the ability, because I think a lot of us can make deals, but I think we like the desire to, to deal with that kind of stuff. Right. But I think that what we have to do as creators is we have to understand that that's part of it, right? right. If we want to get put on, we got to be able to make deals. Right. I did a little research on the topic. Oh, sookie. Right. This is getting and, and, good. And, and this is just, and, and this, these are just tips that I read. Guys, if you have better ways to do this, go for it. Do it that way. <laughs> you know, do what works for you. But for those of us who are like, damn, what do I do? Like, if I go into a board, like, how do I, how do I react? What, right. what, what should I be thinking? Where should my mind be? And it's, right. it's basically, I read an article uh, on Forbes by a gentleman by the name of Brent Bedshore. Bedshore. And he said that every business deal is composed of three basic components. He breaks it down like this. Three basic components. And that is, what do I expect to happen? Right. Walk in there, what am I expecting? Okay. Right. What is the best possible scenario? So right. what is the best thing that can come out of this deal? And what is the worst possible scenario? Right. That's, those are the three basic, you know, um, just uh, what the business deal is composed of. So... When you walk in there and you're thinking, okay, what do I expect? So you walk in there, right? You and I will walk into a, into a business meeting, okay? And we want to get we want to get a deal, you know? We want our, our books published by Say Image, for example, right. right? We walk in there. What do we expect? We expect to get published by them, right? What is the best possible scenario? They pick up the book. What is the worst possible scenario? Other than they don't pick it, they pick it up and it doesn't sell well, right? Right. Right. So when you think about these things, right? And I think that's the thing that stresses us the most is. Man, what do I say? How do I react? And I know that you, I'm sure you have a story about the, um, when we were in that situation, right. but it's nerve wracking. It is nerve wracking. Right? Mm -hmm. Because if you've never done it, if you've never done it in, in that scenario, you're going to be like, what do I do? Right. You, you know what I mean? So yeah, so they were, they were just talking about simplifying it, simplifying it to that point. And it's funny because when you're not, when you haven't been doing that for a while, and even when you don't go to school for that kind of stuff, they have terms and terminologies that help you with these things. Right. And I remember this from like when I used to go to school and, you know, thinking about those things. They have a term called BATNA. And BATNA is the best alternative to a negotiated agreement. Okay. Basically what it is, is what is my alternative if a deal doesn't get done? I thought you meant bring a bat to the meeting. Well, but go ahead. <laughs> that's, that's, I'm just saying that's kind of close. That's kind of <laughs> close. I thought you said bat now. Oh, oh, okay, no, no, okay, bat okay, now. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, bat okay. now. Okay. So anyway, so yeah. So the better alternative. Come in peace. <laughs> <laughs> so the less you need the deal, uh -huh. the more the risk you can take in the negotiation. So if you have nothing to lose, you can you can go in there and just right. go all out. So 
bad night is that. It's what is my alternative if a deal doesn't get done? So that's how you have to approach right. a deal. Like, all right, cool. I want it. So how do you set it? yourself up in a position of strength when you're going into a deal making scenario? How do you set yourself up? Yes. How do you set yourself up? You know, how do you put yourself in a position of strength? Right. So it's basically knowing what they want, right? So if you know that they want something, okay, and you are able to give it to them, mm -hmm. okay, it's a matter of positioning yourself where they say, okay, uh, you know, I don't think, I don't think you're ready. We're ready for that kind of stuff. But then you also have something else right. that you can offer. Right. You know, it, it, it's always about positioning yourself, almost like seeing a step ahead. And again, they talk about what do you have to lose? Right. If you have to lose, then, then it's fine. Um, they also talk about, and I was, you know, the Harvard Law School and all of that and all of these things. They, they try to, they, they basically say, keep it simple. Like, keep your negotiations simple. Um, focus on a problem, you know, solve an approach. Keep technical expert, experts and like lawyers and stuff like that out right. of it sometimes. Right. Sometimes you can, all you got to do is just talk one-on-one -on -one with the person and likability goes a long way. Like, I'm a likable kind of guy. <laughs> I'm just saying, who doesn't like, like the crazy if, man? If people <laughs> like you, they're, they're more willing to, to kind of like, you know, yes. to, to talk to you and to yes. negotiate in a way. Yes. Um, take an outsider's look at the business deal or step back, collect your wits and see the situation objectively. So don't get so caught up on, oh man, it's not working out this way. Let me, look, let me do it this way. Right. Um, they also talk about exploring the usage of like, uh, the zone, the zone of possible agreement, they call it Zopa. Right. The zone of possible agreement. So, you know how how close are we to making this deal? What's what's cause, causing the deal to go bad? Right. You know, and they talk about that kind of stuff. And a lot of these things you can research. You know, you can just Google the art of making a deal. There's a lot of books based on that thing. But I think the biggest thing that I took from from all of this stuff is being willing to step into that ring. Right. Right. But coming prepared. Right. Come in prepared. Like, don't come in there with a half, you know, half finished book or something that doesn't look professionally made. Right. You, you, you know, like, and that's why I say um, the the coming into the stories. That's what I say is to a position of strength. I think you have to create a buzz around your product, um, and you have to get industry people talking about your product. Right. Um, I think what happens is we have this false sense of bravado where everybody believes that our product is the best product in sliced bread mm -hmm. and we're going to be the next Charles Schultz or Jim Henson or Stan Lee. Um, but that's not really the case, especially when you're an independent and no one knows who you are other than your local community, mm -hmm. right? So how do you create a, a position of power? You have to find a niche, a niche market, a niche market. See, is that, the, see, the, the big... No, yeah. lips in my way, wow. right? So, so, yeah. so, so, so that was the last thing I, I <laughs> thought you'd say that that was the reason was why. Like, what was he saying? Uh, he said, "Suck as he what?" Okay. Um, so, Go it. Um, it goes back to when we started mm -hmm. out. Um, see, we we I, I harp on those stories because that's that's our history. And when we started out, um, we started out creating a buzz in our local community and we expanded out and it was because of the grandiose I, um, aspirations. Right. But um, again, we had a solid product with, you know, the packaging was great. The color was great. We had the energy, we had the charisma, right. Um, then um, we took a chance and dove into licensing mm -hmm. and we were in the arena where we needed to be an exposure to the people. Did we have everything buttoned up? Absolutely not. But we had enough product. I remember the flash animation that we I, yeah, did of duty running. Oh, yeah. Right? Um, but we, we, we created a buzz at licensing. Right? What? But again, before you get... Sending just submissions is not going to work. Um, you, have to, you have to bring them to you. Mm -hmm. So you have to put yourself in an, in a, in, in an area where... You're going to lose money in the current time in order to gain money long term. So you have to risk something in the beginning. And we put ourselves in an arena. We caught some attention. Now, you're going to get the wolves and that are going to try to eat you alive and take all your product. We had that experience. Yeah. You know, we were novices. And I remember 
I forgot the name of, they have a, a really big licensing organization. And they, um, they got, came up to our booth and said, um, you know, we're really interested in your product. We want you to come to ours and set up an appointment so we can sit down and speak with you. And we said, okay, um, something entertainment. I'll, I'll remember it. So they had this big elaborate booth. Remember, they had all these tables and they had all these executives in suits meeting with all these different creatives and whatever. So we go in there and I'm like, what? You know, we don't know what we're doing, right? We, we had no legal right. representation. We didn't even know what we were walking into. And we got, I did know that I wasn't going to sell my soul. So when we sat down and the words came out, we own everything. We'll give you, what was it, 3 or 10%? 3 or 10%? It was, it was a tiny percentage. It was a, like a small, small percentage. Yeah, was, we yeah. own everything. We'll give you a small percentage royalty, which is like not even not even half. Um, and I was like, thank you, but no thank you. So I knew immediately what I would not accept. Mm -hmm. um, I understand the what the big guys do. They, you know, they... they, they all the money in and all that stuff but at the same time i'm not if i wanted to sell it out right i would have sold it out right we were looking to licensing um so i think that was a great eye opener and then we had a lot of international um companies wanting to create apps that we, we you know that, and we think about the way apps are now yeah. know. you know, know we didn't know. know how do we, we know knew it, if we yeah. knew you yeah, know what absolutely. i mean but they wanted to create apps and games and all this stuff and they wanted to they were going to fund it and put our product in Korean Licensing Expo. Right. Um, and um, yeah, we would have been but, big out there. But we were fearful of, of um, piracy, mm -hmm. you know, losing our rights, right? So, uh, again, no legal representation. I think I wasn't smart enough. I don't think any of us was to say, hey, let's go get a lawyer. Right. Right. And um, uh, so that's another thing. You got to have somebody who understands how to navigate in those waters. Absolutely. You know, um, the See, I, and I think that part of part of like in in what I was looking through some of these like articles and stuff like that, and and some of this stuff said you know keep lawyers and technical ex experts out of the room to simplify the the mediation. But I think that that's only when the when you're really close to closing that deal. Yes, and there's just something like, for example, a lawyer or uh, you know an expert that the other side doesn't like. Right that they should just step out and right. say, let me just talk to this guy one-on-one. Yeah. -on -one. Right. Let me just talk to him. Right. You know what I mean? So I think that, yeah, and, and we needed, we didn't have the lawyer, you know, we, right. we probably could have, you know, they, we could have, these people could have liked us and yes. they could have done stuff with it, but we didn't have the representation and we didn't, because we didn't think about that back then. I don't even know why. <laughs> like we kind of stepped into that arena, yeah. right? And we were like, all right, let's go for and it. And that was the one thing we didn't, we weren't smart enough to do. Yeah. We did sign with a management company, Circle of Confusion, <laughs> but um, again, I think what happens was when all of the industry started changing leadership, um, and then our stuff fell to the bottom of the barrel, they walked away as well. So they, they were pitching um, Robert Kirkman's stuff, The Walking Dead, and all this other stuff, so you know, we got put on the shelf. Um, but again, I think the elevator pitch, the, the, you know, the boardroom pitch, as you don't need your attorney. I right. think when it starts talking about percentages yeah. and rights. When you, when, yeah, when the negotiations That's when you need start, your attorneys. That's yes. when you need your attorneys and your people to say, okay, listen. Because they, they understand the, jar, the jargon that these people are going to talk, the lingo. Right. You know, so a lot of this stuff is, you read it, you're like, what the heck is this saying? But then emotion take, kicks in, right? Well, so yeah. you can destroy your pitch because you're so emotionally um, invested in your product that you can be, um, you can have diarrhea of the mouth and be word heavy. Right. So one of the things about pitching is you got to be able to sell it in segments, you know, in like anecdotes and bullet points. You got to be able to say, you know, you know, the, the king's realm is threatened, you know, to be destroyed by what are oncoming, whatever, and create a picture for them to say, please tell us more. Right. But if you over sell it, you can bore them or turn them off. They're like, oh my God, this guy's never stopping, yeah. right? So you got to be able to feed them enough to get them, entice them. Mm -hmm. It's like when your mom's in the kitchen and you come home and you and and she's cooking and she's making say barbecued chicken or whatever, and and she's got your favorite, you know, um, herbed mashed potatoes and whatever, and you come over with the spoon and you want to get a lick, and she's like, pa, 
right? And you want more, right? So that's what you got to give them. You got to give them that spoon of potatoes so that they want more, right? So how do you do that with confidence? How do you, how do you narrow a universe of 50 characters and story arcs and, you know, uh, where like we have a, a friend of ours that has maybe uh, 50, 60 volumes of yeah. his, his story. And how do you sell that in three minutes or less, right? How do you capture everyone's attention in three minutes or less so that they say, wow, come on, tell me more. Yeah. You know, that's the, the, the part that we need to explore um, is when you're trying to make that deal, um, how do you do it with confidence? How do you not lose the attention? How do you keep their folk attention? And how do you walk away with everything you intended on getting when you walked in. Yeah. Right. And that's part of that's part of the the deal making process of it, right? right? How do you walk away making them want it? And to me, I mean for me it's and again, what I was talking about is just like once that deal, you know, how to how to almost how to close it, like once they already know what they want, but you got to make them want it, right? right? And a lot of that some of it, I mean Sometimes they say it's better to be lucky than good, right? But I think that you have to be good. You can't just, I mean, I guess sometimes it's like it's luck. And when I say luck, I'm talking about like things like look at, for example, South Park, right? Yeah. That got put on and the artwork, you're like, how the heck did I make it? But there was something about it. And yes. they, right place, right time. Somebody saw it. Somebody liked it. Somebody says, I'm going to take a chance on that. And it blew up. Right. So sometimes it's right, luck. You got to be at the right time. And, and sometimes you have to be good. In other words, you have to have the product that they look and they say, I cannot pass on this. Because if I pass on it, somebody's going to pick it up. Yes. You know, and I think that that's, that's, where, you're, that's where you're able to grab. That, that's, that's where you have the upper hand. If your product is that good. Yeah. Okay. Because if your product is that good, all you really need is just somebody to, 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 to open the door and say, okay, I'm going to yeah. take a look at your stuff. Right, but uh, yeah, I mean that's uh, that's kind of like what we're we're talking about, and obviously for anybody who wants more information on that, there's plenty of stuff online. I mean, I'm sure that we can probably put some of these uh, links on on the uh, on the video as well. I'll send you those links or whatever. But yeah, that's uh, again the biggest thing you got to focus on is making sure you create a buzz. You got to get you got to create a buzz somehow, and again, that's where if you're single um, and you're your own you know, form of income, you got to save your pennies and, 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 and put it where your mouth is. If you're living at home with your parents, you got to ask them to, uh, you know, you know, break into your school funding and uh, hook you up. Um, you know, if you're married, you got to be, you know, plead with your wife on, on taking a risk. And no matter what you do is you got to take a risk. It's going to be, there's going to be some money you got to spend, create a buzz, get it into the right hands. It's timing. Right. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes it's who, you know, Sometimes a it's just of, a lot you of know. times, yeah. A lot of times it's you, who know? you know, but you that also networking, yes. that networking is important. But you have to have charisma, and if you've ever been to comic cons, you you walk down Artist Alley or Small Press Arena, and I can tell you how many of these cats are just sitting there bored as hell with their heads down, either drawing or writing or pretending that they're in the home office when they should be in the game pitching every single person relentlessly until you're tired and your, your mouth is dry and you need a glass of water. Um, but you're not going to do it by sitting there on your, on your keister, hoping someone's going to come over and give you a check. Sound caller. So let's, and that is our. How you doing, Kaylin? All right. How are you? Good, good, good. Welcome to the show, everybody. This is Caitlin. Yes, how are you? Hey, everyone. Thanks for having me. 
Nah, no worries. Thank you for being on the show. This uh, the gentleman who picked up the phone was Sam. Uh, he's uh, he's uh, hosting the show with me here at uh, Catch the Craze, and I want to I really want to thank you for taking your time to uh, be on the show with us um, and talk a little bit about uh, what you do. Uh, sure. So um, I am a comic book illustrator, and uh, I also do covers, and I also design video games. Um, so those are my main things that I'm doing right now. Awesome. You know, it, it, I was reading. I was reading up on uh, some of the stuff that you've done, uh, Kaylin, and we went on your website, and you know, you have the covers for the Coyotes uh, uh, comic book that you uh, that you did with uh, Sean Lewis, and this artwork. It's it's incredible. I want to just 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 to tell us a little bit about your your background, as far as like where you went to school, where did you learn um, your craft, essentially. Sure, sure. So um, I uh, started off going to this. Um, after school program um, at in my hometown on Long Island uh, when I was in high school uh, called the Huntington School of Fine Arts and I kind of learned I started learning um, more fine art style art there and then I um, I ended up to, uh, going to RIT or graduating from RIT with a degree in illustration CSA in illustration um, and I didn't really know where, where I wanted to go with that so um, right out of school I got a job at this uh, kind of small startup game studio um, called Working Man Interactive. And I stayed with them for about six and a half years. Um, I made a lot of Nickelodeon games, a lot of SpongeBob games, um, and started kind of branching off into Disney and other things like that. And then we grew a lot. We were, you know, started off with about six people and ended up, when I left, it was like 40, something like that. Wow. So, um, yeah, I was, ended up art directing there. And then I left because I just felt like I needed to find um, – something that was that really spoke to me you know I uh I was having trouble doing what I wanted to, or finding out what I wanted to do artistically on my own um while also working um like a nine to five so right. I I left and I went freelance and I've been freelance ever since right. um and I still do game design stuff but I'm you know I, I kind of figured out after trying a bunch of different things concept art and painting and murals and all these things that I really love comics so I, I, re I read somewhere uh Kelly, that you aren't really a gamer no, <laughs> which is um, interesting. I mean, you design games for six years, but you're not really like you're not into like that. And and I'm the same way. I mean, I, I'm not a gamer myself. I, I appreciate the artwork, but how? how mm -hmm. I mean, you were doing that for six years. At some point, where you're like, I, I gotta get out of here. I gotta do something. I guess, and I guess you you did feel that way, right? Yeah, I mean, that's part of it. Part of it was is that I just felt like I didn't quite fit in. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But you know, it's funny. Most of the um, the best paid work is in games. So wow. even if you're an artist that isn't really a gamer, you know, that's kind of where the industry, that's where you want to be in terms right. of uh, finding, finding work. So honestly, I don't think it's necessary to be like a, a big gamer if you're an artist for games. If, you're, if you can just appreciate and understand how game mechanics work and then, gotcha. um, you know, find inspire inspiration from other um, sources and, and make beautiful games, then I don't think it really matters. So, so, so you know, you're not the one making the games work. You're just gotcha. being artists. So, what, yeah, and that's what I was going to, that was going to be my next question. So I, I'm looking at some of the stuff on your website now and it's, it's flashing up on the screen. So you basically did a lot of the artwork for like some of the backgrounds on the games. Like for example, the SpongeBob game that was up there, you did a lot of those backgrounds mm -hmm. and things like that. Is that what you were doing? Uh, it's everything. So um, when you're at like a mid-sized company like that, at this mobile game, you wear a lot of hats. So I did everything from character animation to character designs to UI design, which is like all the buttons and menus and stuff, and uh, and backgrounds too. Yeah. So and props and other animations like particle effects and things like that. So you kind of just you kind of learn how to do everything. So I didn't know how to animate, or you know, I was barely a digital artist when I left school, but I had to kind of hop on that train and, and learn a lot of a lot of stuff That's on amazing. the job. And, and then and yeah. then you know, with all the technology that's out there and obviously all the programs that you have to learn, did you have to go ahead and then just kind of go in there and say, okay, I'm going to learn how to draw digitally or, and do things of that nature? Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I started off traditionally and then I learned some digital in school, but not very much. And then I got to work in man. I was, uh, I kind of was throwing the deep end and had to learn how to use Flash and Photoshop and <laughs> Clip Studio and, um, now Flash is called Adobe Animate because they don't want right. <laughs> to, you yeah. don't want that, that Flash name associated. But 
um, yeah, now I'm learning. I mean, you have to stay really adaptive. So like I'm right now I'm in a, uh, a new contract job and I'm learning how to use Unity and Blender 3D and wow. ZBrush and all that stuff. So what, what do you prefer? Do you prefer traditional or do you prefer the, the digital? You know, it, I go back and forth a lot. Um, digital, I get exactly what I want, but it's also maybe too clean that way. Like you don't get quite as much of the hand drawn. Sorry, that's my family dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. She's protecting us from nothing. What kind of dog um, is it? She's like part uh, Catahoula leopard dog, part oh, nice. blue tick beagle. She's like a hound kind of dog, but um, <laughs> she's a little paranoid. Anyway, um, yeah, go ahead. yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, so uh, what were we talking about? No, no, I was saying, what do you prefer? Uh, do you prefer yeah, you said it's too clean, the, uh, the digital. You prefer, Sometimes you want to see some of that. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I love digital. I really do. And I, and I love the studio paint. That's like the, the program I work in mm -hmm. when I'm drawing and painting for comics. Um, yeah. And sometimes I think I should just stick with digital because it's um, so much easier to edit things. You know, you can move things around and resize stuff. And, yeah. But at the same time, there's like a real satisfaction to having final inks. So what I've been doing is kind of just doing digital um, pencils and then printing them out really, really light and then doing like the fine detail and just inking with ink um, when, I, when I have a chance, like when I have time to do that. Gotcha. So. Hey, who, who was your influence? I'm looking at some of the stuff that, you, that you've done. Who, who were some, some of your influences as far as uh, your style? Oh my God, how much time do you have? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so I I grew up um, loving Brian Froud and Alan Lee, who wrote this book together or made this book together called Fairies from like the 70s. Mm -hmm. And it was like really creepy and dark, but also really beautiful. And that kind of sparked my interest in drawing, I think. Um, so that was the first thing that got me. I was like obsessed with fairies and stuff for a really long time. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, and like Dark Crystal and Labyrinth and everything, and those were all directed by the same guy, Brian Froud. Um, and then as I got older, you know, there were um, fine artists I was really into. I really loved Lucy and Freud and Sargent and, um, and then other illustrators. And there's a concept artist, um, who illustrator, I guess, uh, her name is uh, Carla Ortiz. I really love her work. Mm -hmm. um, and then in comics, I, I, I'm a big fan of James Heron. I think he's a freaking master. Yeah. And um, let's see who else. Fiona Staples, and um, there's just so many. I, no, know. I know. I, and Mateo Scalera. Like I, I freaking love Mateo Scalera. Right. Um, Pepe Larraz. Um, yeah, there's just so many, so many great people out there. And I, and I've been looking at some other fine artists too. Um, on most of it's on Instagram. Like if I need inspiration or I'm looking. Right you know, to get excited about stuff. I, I use Instagram to like follow artists that I love. So there's a guy named um, uh, Nikola Saribev, who's um, a painter and uh, draftsman. And he does these portraits that are just so beautiful. Um, yeah. That, so, that, that's, yeah, that's I just, I, I keep thinking it. Yeah, no, I'm sorry mm -hmm. to cut you off, Kelly. I was just gonna say oh, that, that, that's the beauty of, of, of like even the social networks, right? Because if you, if there's an artist that you love, you follow him and they and you know that they'll constantly post things up there and you're constantly able to admire yeah. the stuff that they're doing and it motivates you it it kind of it, it, it kind of says okay if you're feeling kind of down about a page or something you go in there you look at that and you're like okay instant inspira inspiration and you can go on about um drawing or doing Absolutely. whatever you have to do yeah no that's amazing do you, you do you also do yeah, the like coloring yep i do the coloring lettering oh, um cover paintings and interior i do all, all the art oh that is amazing. How long does it take yeah. to do a page? Oh boy. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'd like to get two pa two days for a page, but um, that's not always the case. Yeah. So um, it really depends on the deadline and depends on how complicated the pages are. So, you know, that's that's what I would like to get for the page, but that's not always. You know, sometimes it has to be a day or a day and a half for a page. Wow. So. Wow. And now do you work off of uh, the, the, the scripts that you work off of? I mean, you, you, you work with Sean Lewis on, on Coyotes. Does he give you finished scripts or does he kind of let you play around with the with the page layout and things of that nature? How do you work um, when it comes to that? Oh, yeah. Um, he's, he's actually great to work with. He's, um, you know, I, I'm I'm pretty I'm relatively new to comics mm -hmm. and I didn't I, I didn't know until I got into the, you know, started, you know, to do my toe in the field that you 
don't have a lot of say in your panels and your layouts necessarily, depending on the writer. Right. And I'm really, I'm just, I just really, I'm really stubborn about that. I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> and he's, he's never, um, he, like, I didn't even say that to him. He just sends me scripts though. And it's perfect because they're just scripts. Right. Like there's almost no description of the characters. There's almost no panel, anything, maybe a, one or two suggestions, but oh. like basically it's just like reading like a movie script or something. Oh, nice. So, so, you, so your um, imagination can kind of do whatever it wants to do and kind of lay it out on the page. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and he just trusts me and it's, it's really awesome. We have a really good collaboration, you know, with the stories too. I get to, I get to pitch him story ideas and oh. get to go back and forth about the plot and, um, you know, he's, he's really receptive and open. He's like a, a real partner. You That's know? perfect. That's perfect. So when it comes, and, and, and I'm sorry I'm asking you so many questions about comics. It's just that, you know, being no. a person who's in that, you know, loves uh, the medium. I, I'm just very interested in when, when I talk to an artist, their process, right? So you get the script, mm -hmm. you sit down with the script at, at, at your desk, and how do you create that page? Like, do you start with thumbnails or how does that, how does that happen? Sure. So um, what I tend to do is, and I, I can tell you now, just um, it's, it's actually pretty fresh in my mind because I've just uh, started thumbnailing for the next issue for this new series we'll be seeing. So um, he'll send me a script, and then I'll send notes back, and then we'll kind of go back and forth a little bit, and then I'll break up what I think is enough dialogue and or action for each page. So I'll kind of break down the page, the pages, and be like, okay, I think this is enough for this page, and then. I'll be like, okay, I think we're at like 22, 24, 26, whatever we end up with. Right. Um, sometimes I'm wrong and I have to fix that later, but um, that's like the general idea. And then I do uh, really rough thumbnails and the thumbnails are without any reference. It's just kind of like, you know, cool little chicken scratch. You can barely, barely legible. <laughs> and um, it's really just to get the ideas out there and like think about the, the shots and kind of like being a cinematographer. Like, right. I imagine being right. a cinematographer. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, or a storyboard artist, I get, I guess, you know. Right. So um, that's kind of how I approach that. And then I send, I show Sean the sketches, and he's usually like, "Cool, these look awesome." Mm. And then um, I actually, I I take a lot of reference. So for the characters for this new series, for example, um, I actually have the characters looking like the people that are posing for them. Mm. So um, they're they're all friends of mine up in Rochester, New York, which is where I spend most of my adult life. And I, um, I'm living in New York City now, but I go up, I just came back actually today from Rochester um, to do another photo shoot with, uh, with friends for the next, for issue number four that I'm working on. So they, they're really awesome and they just come together and they volunteer to pose. Like I, I go through every panel of every page and I go, okay, now here you're going to be like throwing this thing. And now here you got a gun cocked at, at this person. And like right. here you're going to be like falling backwards. And so, you know, they get dressed up and they come over and we have like a party and it's really fun. Fun. Yeah. No, it's funny because we have a friend, um, this gentleman by the name of Jerry Wensboro. He does exactly what you're talking about. They're like photo shoots. He legit has them dressed up, you know, posing and uh -huh. how, and it makes it so much. And, and the stuff just comes out more realistic because you're, you're actually, it's, it's a reference, but they're, they're, they look exactly the way you want them to look. And it, that's incredible totally. that you said that that's exactly what you guys do. And it becomes a party, right? So you guys are having a good time. You're doing what you, and it's, I mean, it's work, but it's fun. It's fun to do it that way. Yeah. It is. It's it's a lot. Of, I mean, it, and it's fun to share those photos later to be like, this is how we do this stuff, you know. It's, um, and then you have, you know, exactly the angles that you want and the characters that you want, and um, so it's really great. And then so after that, I do like like a full sketches of like you, you know using that reference. Um, you know, I'll, I'll usually have it on another screen to look at, and I'll kind of draw out the layout that I originally thumbnailed, and then kind of put those characters in there and find reference for backgrounds and all that stuff. And then, and then once those pencils are tight enough, then I'll go in and I'll, I'll print them out really, really light and then link over them. Nice. That's, that's incredible. And so that, and that's why the, I mean, the process, the process of making comics is just, it's no joke. I mean, you think it's like, Oh, they just join comics. No, this is, it's, it's serious business uh -huh. <laughs> doing comics. It's, it's the most work I've ever done for like, <laughs> I've dipped my toe in a bunch of different industries to right. do illustration work, and like this is by far the most arduous. I mean, it's most rewarding too, but right, right, it's it's hard work, yeah. Oh, jeez. Now, do you do you see yourself doing something else um, outside of comics once you're, you know, like, are you planning? Is there like a plan as far as like okay, I'll do a couple of comics and then go and do something other things, maybe something in like in movies or things like that, or now? I I don't know. 
know. I mean, if if movie stuff ever happened, that would be great. We have an uh, an option. Um, so I, I mean, if that ever did happen, then sure, yeah, why not? But right. honestly, that wouldn't that wouldn't be like my main goal. I I want to stay in comics as long as I can. Like, I Good think, you. you know, I mean, I can't. I don't know who can afford to work in comics without having another job, honestly. Yeah. So I'll probably be working in games for a long time. But <laughs> but um, but I definitely feel like comics is home for me. Like that's where I want to. I love telling stories. That's awesome. How, how did you, um, I, I mean, I don't know if, if you can even answer this, but as far as when you, when you hooked up with, with Sean and you guys started doing that work, was there, it was this something that came, um, that you also had input as far as creating the story of coyotes and then you guys pitched it to image or did he already have that deal with image and he was just looking for an artist and that's how you guys came together. How did that work out? So no, he didn't have a deal for that story particularly, but he had just, done um, a series called Saints with Image. Mm-hmm. So he sent me a pitch, basically. He sent me like his first draft of issue one. And then I decided to go, you know, to, to work with him. He emailed me after I had posted something on Facebook wall on, on another studio's page. Oh, okay. Okay. They had like a submission process and he was gotcha. looking through all these artists that had posted there and then he saw my stuff and then he emailed me and said, this is a story I'm thinking about working on. I did this thing with Image. Do you want to work together? And so I was like, you know, you're a little reticent sometimes to work with people you don't know or to do stuff for free because you're kind of partners and you're just working, you know, for a long time on something. But sure. I really believe in his story. So, yeah, so we started working together and it's been great. And it's worked out. That's amazing. Good for you. That That's that's awesome. So, no, and then I, I also saw um, something about uh, some music endeavors. Are you, uh, are yeah. you, do you, you do also, you also do, uh, anything with a band or, or what, what are you doing in the music industry? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't do it really professionally. It's more just, uh, um, amateur, but I, I play, I've played in a bunch of bands up in Rochester. Um, nice. and, uh, I play violin and I sing. So, um, Kira, you know, you, I just, you do I, it all, I play Kira. a bunch of, <laughs> well, you know, I just, I love music. I've always, I've played violin since I was a kid, but I, wow. it was all classical. And then after college, I got more into like the folk kind of stuff. And so I've been mm-hmm. playing with like indie bands and folk bands and stuff. So it's, it's really fun. I, honestly, music gives me a lot of unadulterated joy, whereas right. like art is a little bit more complicated mm-hmm. than that because it's, it's accompanied by, by the stress of like, trying to make a living and trying yeah. to get seen yeah. and trying deadlines. to get published and all. Yep. 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 Yeah, yep. deadlines absolutely so like music is like there's no pressure to do any of that so you kind of just enjoy yeah that's amazing and now I, I know prior to you calling us we, we had talked a little bit about some of the things that you're that are coming down the pike for you do you want to tell us a little bit about your future mm-hmm. uh, projects that you're working on sure so I was just mentioning about um, this new story I'm working on with Sean it's called Bliss mm-hmm. And, um, well, that's the working title anyway. Who knows? <laughs> it's going to change. But I think that's what that's the title. It's going to be in six issues. Um, and we don't have a, an exact date yet, but we have a pretty much a go ahead with Image. So we're kind of just waiting to see when that's going to happen, probably sometime this summer. And, uh, yeah, I'm working on issue number four. So hopefully most of the series, it's going to be eight issues like Coyote Club. So right. hopefully by the time it come, the first one comes out, I'll be so far ahead that I won't have to, like, you know, freak out about a yeah. m- monthly issues. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how, how many issues do you like to be ahead before um, things go, come out um, for you to be comfortable? What are you looking at, three or four yeah, issues? Yeah, probably at least at least four, yeah. yeah. Um, just because, I, you know, I would ideally love to have two months per issue. I, you know, I, I work pretty slowly because I have another full-time job and I'm also doing all of the stuff, you know, first everything from penciling to coloring to lettering. Jeez, so I, yeah. it's, it's a lot. Um, <laughs> but... Yeah, so, and then, but, you know, it's actually nice that I think we're going to be doing this in the summer because it gave me a little bit of breathing room and I'm going to be working on another project and I, it's with Boom, but I can't really talk about it yet. I'm like so excited. (laughs) I'm totally like geeking out about it. I I can't wait to like, uh, shout it off the rooftop, but, um, yeah, so I'm I'm starting that soon. And then I did a thing with Shelly Bond, uh, for, uh, Black Crown, uh, there was that big anthology of like a bunch of different artists and writers putting pages together like sto- little stories together right right um it's called hey amateur so i did a page for that with uh, uh writer uh, michael conrad mm-hmm. so yeah so, it's just a blast yeah no i see that are, are you going to be at any any conventions or anything like that with like where can people uh 
I guess if they wanted to see some of your stuff or if they wanted to, you know, meet you and things like that, are you oh, going to yeah. be out? Sure. So, I mean, social media wise, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, all that stuff. Um, and then I'm going to be tabling at Emerald City this year mm-hmm. and at TCAP, which is not show. Sweet. Yeah, we did. We did Emerald City one year and that, that was a fun show. Have you been there before? Yeah, I, I went last year just to go. I did like a panel and I did a, a little signing thing, but um, I didn't have a table there. But it was so much fun. Like, I mean, it's, I think it's a, I think it's a lot of people's favorite con because uh, it's yeah, it's big, but it's not too big, and it's you know, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. No, that's awesome, Caitlin. I really. Did you have did you have a nice time? Yeah, no, we did. We had a really good time. We got to see the city. You know, you you go out to Seattle and you check it out. It's. It's fun. It, yeah. it, was, it was a really, really, and, and Seattle's a beautiful city. I mean, they say it rains a lot over there, but when we were there, it wasn't, the weather was no, fine. It is beautiful and everything. It's, it's so lush there because of all that rain. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Caitlin, thank you so much for stopping on the show. I mean, I wish I had more time to talk to you, but I, I'm definitely going to reach out to you just on the social uh, networks and, and hopefully I'll, uh, I'll run into you at one of these shows and we can uh, chat a little more. That would be great. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you, Caitlin. You take care. You too. All right, bye. There is no better way to start the day than with a cup of joe and an episode of Catch the Craze. I'm so crazy. You so crazy. Crazy. Who's the craziest? I'm so crazy. You so crazy. Crazy. Yo, that was a great interview. Dude, Kaylee, yes. She's talented man all the, the, you see that website i mean the stuff that she's doing and how she does the coloring the the, the artwork the lettering everything <laughs> it's a labor of love everything that's and amazing. she works full-time and she's a musician and you see how but you see how and good she that fights stuff crime looks. at night it's <laughs> crazy it is amazing dude yes. that, that, yeah i definitely got to pick up the that coyotes uh that coyotes book yeah, and I can't wait to see what it is that uh, she's got coming out from Boom Studio. She seems to be very excited about it, so I can't wait to see what that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your mic, you keep on yeah. going off. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Not, yeah. What's up with that? I don't know. Um, Rookies over here. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but that, thank you for uh, Caitlin. Uh, if you haven't picked up Coyote, pick it up. Um, and again, visit her, her website. She's on Facebook. We we put up that page um, during the interview. Um, we also put up a web page during the interview. Um, very extremely talented. Um, I mean, just the, the 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 cover designs are just fantastic. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, they're no, off the incredible, chain. Incredible, man! Incredible. Yeah, no, she's uh, very, very talented. And it's funny because she, you know, she was talking about she was doing games and she was designing games before. And doesn't get, play getting games into at all. comics and doesn't play games, but she's just like, dude, and that's where the money is. <laughs> games, people <laughs> play. That's where the money is. Remember it's that amazing. song? No. You remember games? Oh man, games, people play. <laughs> You don't remember that song? Oh, no, who sang it? Stop acting up. No, no, who sang it? No, seriously, no, who sang it? Who I got to look it up. I got to oh. look it up. I don't know. It, it, was it a rap or was it? It was, Um, I don't know if it was house music. Let's see. Wait, hold on. I'll tell you right now. People play it. I don't remember this. Let's see. But yeah, man, that was a good one. That was a good interview. I definitely it's old school. see what else. Um, Is this it? Uh, Joe South, was that? I don't know, maybe. Um... <laughs> you can tell me off air. Don't worry about it. We got a show to do here. Spinner Sam. Circle? People are waiting for us. People are, are hanging on every word here. Spinners? No, it's not the spinners. There you go. You're in the zone now. I lost you. I lost Sam. Sam's gone. Look at him. He's on uh, phone. This kid hit bugs you that much. <laughs> oh, boy. Is it? Was it house music? Oh, God. Joey uh, Smith? Earth to Sam. <laughs> Sam, we're, Sorry. we're doing a that's show. It. I know, right? Sorry, my bad. It can't be no. That's not it. Oh God! That's wow, definitely he's not really it. playing that's the song. That's not it. This case, really? no, I'll find it and uh, I'll play it for you guys, please. Uh, On the next show. Oh, hip hop! I think it was hip hop. Was it? I mean, you you threw in that little beat, so I thought that maybe it was hip hop. See, this is what happens. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, here it is. There you go. Uh, Sweet G. I think that's what... Give me a shooter for the dice. Oh, yeah. 
This is old school. It's called uh... oh. Damn, it's got a whole bunch of samples. Can we be playing this on the air without getting in trouble or no? Do we need right the rights to the song? <laughs> Just in your anyway, so that's the song. Um, Thanks. Hey, plug, plug. I'll make sure it's in the notes, credits too. Plug, plug. There you go. Games yeah. people play wanna, by wanna the get, fever. Want to get sued? But yeah, I can't remember. That was the. I was. The, the, <laughs> you remember the dancing? <laughs> what? It's all. No. Oh God. <laughs> anyway, so next nope. month. Uh, we'll let people know who will be on the show next month, but we have some good stuff coming down the pike. Yes. Yes. Um, we want you <laughs> on our show. Uh, so yes. So we're booking slots for spring season. So, um, currently if you're interested, give us a call. Um, don't be scared. Have you heard? Uh, and if you're a fan of cash the craze, can you please subscribe to our YouTube channel? We'd like to grow that channel expeditiously. Like T.I. would say. <laughs> T.I. is great. Yes, He's got, he throws out these words. <laughs> like what? You know, at least when He's he, always dressed yes, up, got the yes. suit on. When he, you believe it when he throws out these words. When yeah. Mike Tyson throws out the words, it's a little different. <laughs> Mike. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to find me. He's like, mess you up, He's like, I'm out of you. I'm out of you. <laughs> I'm out of you. Oh, <laughs> Sam. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, you're right. <laughs> the beast come. All right, right. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah. So, thank you, Caitlin. Uh, again, if you're planning on making the deal, make sure that you get in the game and you have your game face on. And again, create a buzz. Create a buzz. Create a buzz. Um, check us out on Instagram, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Facebook. On um, check me. Uh, check us out on TikTok. Right, uh, we're so on TikTok, TikTok, right? That's right, that's right. Videos, videos on TikTok. Vigimos. Check them out. Right, uh, meet a So right. I'm Sam the Crazy Man, Vera. And I'm George the Dreamer, Medina. Look at him. Dream Happy. On. Oh, that's what you want to do. You want to <laughs> dance and sing. Anyway, <laughs> peace out, y'all. Peace out. And I got it. Boom. It's just easy. It's not. Crazy. 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 <laughs> no, I was talking about my friend Aquis. I met him. Oh. Yeah. Say my name, say my day. Right? <laughs> this is what you were thinking? Oh, right. He was crappy. He said, I'm the. You're listening to Catch the Craze. You're listening to Catch the Craze. You are listening to Catch the Craze on Catch the Craze. You're listening to Catch the Craze.